Have you guys ever flown one of these things? You know, the cool guy on TV tells you it's the coolest thing ever. They make it fly in between little glasses in the kitchen and stuff. But uh, yeah, proud to say that uh, what they do with the little toys, I'm a professional for the bigger stuff. That's right, I'm a professional remote control helicopter pilot. Yay me, yay me. Uh, but did you know that those little things can also do this on a bigger scale? Yep, that's mine. You know, it's a little while ago. Uh, the world of RC helicopters is truly amazing. Uh, there's probably a lot that some of you guys will know, but for those of you who don't know, I uh, just want to educate you a little bit. So this series of video is called Smack 101, where I want to walk you through everything involving RC helicopters from not knowing anything up until the stages of doing flips and different tricks like we do. Um, so Smack 101 for me was really started, like I just wanted to inform everybody just from day one from flying from knowing absolutely nothing and we're going to take you to doing front flips and stuff like that. Then Burke's going to pick up on his learning 3D series where he starts with front flips and takes it to the most complicated maneuvers we can do. So I hope you bear with us with this. There's lots of information I want to tell you. It could take a year to get all this out there, but we will get it done, no doubt. So anyway, I'm a 21 year old college kid. I go to school full time, mechanical engineering student, but my job is to fly and help design and help prototype and test and do all these sort of different things in the hobby, um, but I get to do that with RC helicopters. So in that time, I've got to travel to a ton of cool places, fly tons of models, crash the heck out of a ton of things, break stuff, meet cool people. So it's really fascinating. We just want to give you a little insight into all that. Um, so with RC helicopters, you can do some cool things. Obviously they hover, as you can see your air hogs used to do. Um, they can go upside down, they can go backwards, they can go 100 miles per hour, they can go 150 miles per hour. They can stop, they can go back the other direction the same speed. It's just truly incredible what you can really do with these things. So what we do with them is called 3D or freestyle. So if you're familiar with skateboarding or, I don't wanna say figure skating, that's kinda lame, but uh, I don't know, BMX or uh, I guess dancing, there's different moves that you can do. Um, so with helicopters, we have different moves. We can do things called a chaos, we can do things called a funnel or a TikTok. Um, just throughout the past, I'd say 15 years, the world of freestyle 3D has really come a long, a long way. And uh, so in this whole series, we're gonna teach you a little bit about that stuff and really just kind of build up on the basics in order to get to that point. incredible adrenaline rush when you're standing there flying. Um, I'm teaching my roommate how to fly right now and he's just learning how to tail and hover, the very first step of hovering. And every time he flies he's he's really into it, he gets really excited. So that's cool. I remember when I was first learning, you get into it. It's, it's really fun. And even now when we fly in front of a thousand, hundred of people, thousands of people, I mean the rush is the same no matter what skill you're at. Um, the highs are incredible. I mean when you learn to do your first flip you know, you're on cloud nine, you can't stop shaking. And then the next day your helicopter could destroy itself, which is a pretty low low, but it's a wild ride and I just highly recommend that you guys get into it. Um, I do have to warn you that it's expensive. Um, if you want anything else besides an air hog that you can fly in your backyard or something, it's gonna be a few hundred bucks to a thousand dollars. Usually we tell people a thousand dollars. That's for electric or nitro. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but be prepared to put in a good amount of money into this. But until that time, there's a few things where you can do to kind of, uh, uh, kind of see if you're interested in it or not. Uh, the first thing that you want to check out is these little micro coaxials. So ones like this. This one's called a Blade MCX. Uh, they're just great. This one is, I think, 120 bucks, brand new. Comes out of the box completely ready to fly. Comes with your transmitter, comes with a battery comes with everything just ready to go. You plug it in and go. You can fly it around your kitchen. Now what it does, what it offers besides the little micro, the little air hogs that come for $29 is it has a fully controllable transmitter. So you have the collective pitch like we have where you can go up and down and cyclic pitch where you can rotate the helicopter in different directions. It also has rudder and they seem to work really well. They're very crash resilient. You can swat them out of the air and they're still great. Um, batteries are eight bucks for them. You can get a charger for $20, so you can really fly all day for under $200, well under $200. Um, once you decide 
if you like it past that point, if the MCX or something along those lines work well for you, I'm not too familiar with the others. I, I really like the Blade. Um, then you can decide whether you want to get a bigger helicopter. So once you go to a bigger helicopter, there's different sizes. Um, well, I'll just cover all the sizes right now, just so you can get a kind of a visual and just kind of see what there is. So we'll start with the very, very smallest, and that's the MCX, obviously. Then up from there, you can go with something like a 200 or a 250. Uh, right now, the current ones, Gowie has a 200 and 250, and Align has a T-Rex 250. So those are, as you can see, they're kind of small. Um, batteries are relatively inexpensive. But all of these tend to add up to $500 to $2,500 for, for the small 200 size all the way up to the size I'm going to get to. Uh, the next size up is like a 450 size. These swing blades that are about, they're 325 millimeters, so they're about this big. Um, they're pretty fun. Uh, they're a good way to start out. Um, another thing you can look at is a 500 size. Once again, a line has a T-Rex 500. Gowie has a uh, 425, I believe Outrage has some. There's lots of different models out here that you can look at. Uh, the next size up from that, and the, probably the most popular size is a 600 or a 50 size. If it's a nitro motor, it'll run like a OS or a YS50 or a 55 or 56 in that range. Um, models like that include the miniature aircraft Fury 55, the newest one from them, uh, the Align T-Rex 600 electric and nitro. Um, Outrage, Mikado has a uh, Logo 600, their Raptor, Raptor 50, uh, Hirobo Skidoo, there's a very, very, very broad class. These seem to have very good power to weight ratio, you can do whatever you want. You can see them in the air very well. Um, they fly just like the bigger ones. And finally is the biggest ones, like this thing. Uh, we call these 90s or 700s. It's a 700 millimeter blade, each blade's probably about this long. They're, they're huge. Um, they can weigh up to about 12 pounds and the electric ones can have upwards of probably eight or nine horsepower. So that's really scary. It, it's cool. Those things are the biggest ones. Those are what we compete with mainly. Um, lots of power, just incredible. Uh, uh, the, the feeling when you fly them, it's, it's just really cool. You know, when we fly them in competitions to music, you really get a, uh, you know, it's a dramatic feel to them. They really kind of por portray some really cool stuff there. Um, so here are your full classes. Like I said, these 90s will run up to I don't know, $2,500. So once you decide on which size you want, then it's time to decide whether you want nitro or electric. Now, the size is pretty much dependent on whatever you want. I would personally recommend if you're just starting out, like a T-Rex 600 or a Raptor 50, something either nitro or electric. Uh, I'm going to let myself uh, fight about that in a little bit, as you, as you will see. Um, but that's really the biggest thing. You want to decide what the size is. Um, you should ask guys, you should try to find a local field near your house. Um, there's a uh, Academy of Model Aeronautics, which is the AMA, and they govern all of the RC pilots in the whole US. So you want to go to their website, I believe you can just Google search that, Ca Academy of Model Aeronautics, and you can find a field close to your house. Go there and check it out. Meet the guys at the field, see what they're flying. I suggest you get the same brand that everybody's flying, because then you'll get the same parts, and you know, if something breaks and you don't have it, you can run to your buddy's house and grab it. Um, see what they tend to recommend over there. But me personally right now, once you like the MCX or a class like that, I'd really recommend a 50 size, either nitro or electric. So now I'm going to let myself duke it out and you can decide whether you'd like a nitro or electric. <laughs> With nitro, I can fuel and fly all day. My electrics are very powerful and very smooth. My tanks can last eight minutes. How long do your batteries uh, last? I don't have to clean anything up at the end of the day. Smoke's awesome, dude. The smoke, sound, it's My it's electrics great. have instantaneous power, too. My nitros make lots of power, and you can uh, get it. a bunch of batteries and just keep them in the truck, fly whenever I want. There's just something about a nitro motor that's just sweet. Uh, I've got no maintenance to do. You gotta tweak your stuff all the time. Nah, they were playing way too nicely. And the negatives? Feels expensive, man. Dude, you know how expensive lipos are? Nah, you guys have to learn how to tune your motor. Have fun taking the generator to the field. Your stuff's messy, too. You gotta clean all that oil away. Dude, cleaning takes five minutes, man. Yes, five yes. minutes. Starter, fuel pump, glow driver. Charger, generator, extension cord, blah, blah, blah. You guys have lots of vibrations, too. You gotta dial your stuff in. Mine's nice and smooth. Man, have fun with those lipos. Don't blow yourself up. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was pretty cool. That was fun. Um, well, maybe you can make up the decision for yourself. Um, personally, I think I'm a nitro guy. I really like nitro. I can just toss a case of fuel in the back of my truck and just fly for however long I want. You still have to charge batteries. You still have to charge a receiver battery, but we'll get, a, we'll get into all that later. Um, once you decide whether you want a nitro or electric and your size, you then have to decide what kind of transmitter you want. Um, there's a lot of different transmitters out there now that really do a good job. There's a lot of nice entry-level transmitters. For an entry-level guy, um, you really want e at least a six-channel computerized radio. You may have seen your grandfather use an old four-channel with a crystal that you had to put in, but we've come a long way since that time. Now we're all running 2.4 gigahertz, which is the same as like a wireless router, where there's millions of different frequencies, and they hop and do all sorts of really cool stuff, so you never have to worry about interfering with anybody. You can just flip on your radio and go. So that's been a huge advantage in the past few years, mainly three or four years or so. Um, once you do that, you really need to pick out what kind of a radio you want. I'd recommend anything from 6-channel, 7-channel, or 8-channel radio. Anything past that right now seems to be a little bit overkill. You really don't need that. If you want to, for instance, Futaba makes a 10-channel, uh, 12-channel, and 14-channel radio. Um, JR makes a new 11-channel radio that looks like Megatron that's coming out. looks really cool. Uh, they have a 12 channel as well. High tech has, you know, all these sort of things. So there's there's tons of different radios you can get. But for starting out, I'd really recommend for the Spectrum guys like a DX7. That's a very good radio. If you want to use Futaba, um, I'd check out the 8FG. That radio has a lot of room for um, com compatibility. There's a lot of room for growth there. I'm currently using it myself. So as you can see here, I've listed out the uh, Futaba radios, the six channel, seven channel, and eight channel radio and you can see them respectively, you may want to look into them. And I also have listed the Spectrum 7 channel, the DX7. I think between those four radios, those are really ones to keep an eye out for. Um, now within the radio system, I'm just going to explain a few things that go in the helicopter to make it fly. First you have your receiver, as shown here. The receiver is what gathers your information and sends it out to these guys, to the servos. The servos are the things that actually move. They make your swash plate move, they make your tail rotor move, they make everything go uh, to make your commands do what you want the helicopter to do. Uh, you then, for nitro for instance, you have a receiver battery that powers the receiver. Um, nitro you also have a motor and an exhaust as shown here. Pretty cool. Uh, for electric you'll have an electric motor and a speed controller. Um, those can range anywhere in prices and costs and different functions and there's a lot of different options there. Um, you then have your main blades, your tail blades, and your paddles, as shown here. And those are mainly the main components of the helicopter. So I may list out some other ones in future episodes, may go into more detail or less detail about different things. But really just wanted to give you a, a little bit of a background to these things. So now that you've selected your radio and your helicopter, um, get those on order. Go to your local hobby shop and order those things. If not, check out the online um, RC helicopter uh, websites. There's a lot of good ones. There's ones like uh, Ron Lund, that's uh, Heli Pro South down in Texas. There's Heli Pros out in Montana. There's so many. There's RC Hover, there's A Main Hobbies, there's Esprit, there's Ready Heli. There's all these different kinds, so uh, I'd really check out the online communities like runrider.com or helifreak.com or rcheliresource.com. There's just so many. Just Google RC Helicopter, and you can see all these different retailers. So there's lots of different places to order from, and uh, you can choose from who you order from with that. Lastly, I'm going to leave you with the advice of to go buy a simulator. While this stuff's in the mail, you may want to order yourself a simulator as well. I would highly recommend it. A simulator, um, I recommend personally like Real Flight or Phoenix or uh, was it Reflex I believe it was, where your um, transmitter just hooks up to the computer by USB and you can fly it and crash it as many times as you want. As soon as you crash, you press the space bar. When we crash in real life, we have to wrench a lot. Usually every crash involves at least three hours of work, four hours of work, and hundreds of bucks. Um, simulator, you can just fix it immediately. Just press one button. Um, they really fly closely to the real things. I think simulators are maybe a hundred and some dollars, um, which is just about the price of your average crash for a Nitro model. So it's highly worth it. You can learn as many things on there as you want to. So definitely check out those.
All right, now I'm gonna give you a shopping list for stuff to buy. So either way, you need to buy a radio. So we got your radio. Next, you're gonna need a charger of some sort. I don't care if you're gonna need nitro or electric. Um, we'll say, you know, that's up there too. You're then gonna need to buy your helicopter kit. Most of these come in kits where you gotta build them just like Lego set to erect your sets. So you've got your helicopter kit, either nitro or electric. So now we'll stick with the nitro path. So you're gonna need a motor and a muffler. You're gonna need um, three servos for your swash, um, your aileron elevator and pitch servo. You're then gonna need a head holding gyro, um, at the very least like a Futaba 401. Um, there's lots of different models here, we can look into that later. Um, you're then gonna need a rudder servo that comes with that. Usually that's a high speed um, rudder servo. And you're also gonna need a throttle servo, pretty much anything will do, um, digital or non-digital. Um, you're then going to need your receiver, but that comes with the radio. And you're going to need some fuel, a fuel pump, and a starter. You're going to need to be able to start your stuff. So now, if you go with an electric, you're going to need your radio, of course. You're also going to need your charger again. I'd recommend, if you're going to have electric helicopters, I'd recommend like a, a two-stage charger. Hyperion makes a really nice duo charger where you can charge two batteries at one time. Um, either that or any charger that will charge your lithium batteries. You're going to need some lithium batteries to fly it. So if you have a T-Rex 600, for instance, you need a six cell battery. So it's 22 volts, around 5,000 milliamps will let you fly for six or seven minutes. Um, you're then going to need the same servos. You're going to need three swash plate servos. You're going to need a head holding gyro. You're going to need a tail rotor servo, but you don't need a throttle servo. Instead, you're going to need an electric motor and a speed controller. And usually, them, those, so usually those come in the kits or you can go out and buy them elsewhere. Um, but with a T-Rex 600, for instance, they seem to come in the kits. So now that we've got that, you can see the total price. It's well over $1,000 for everything. It gets quite scary. The radios are a few hundred bucks. Servos receive a few hundred bucks. It seems to add up. But I assure you, it's well worth the cost. So thank you for watching our very first episode of Smack 101, episode one. If you knew all this stuff and you're laughing right now, then you know it now, again, and I guess it's good to hear it everything a second time. Maybe some of the things that I've stressed you can go back and take a look at, such as the simulator and learning your basics. Um, for those of you who've never heard this stuff before, then I hope you found this useful. Uh, share this with your friends. I feel like this first episode is really good for anybody who wants to learn more about our hobby or our sport for that matter. So go show it to your grandmother, go show it to your friends who are interested in flying, um, you know, buddies at school who may be interested in to see what you do. Um, so I, I tried to list out a good amount of everything that's involved in this hobby. So until next time, I will uh, see you with episode two where we're gonna go over flying, some setups, some different things like that. In the meantime, check out our website at uh, www.smacktalkrc.com with the latest updates and our newest videos that come out every month. Bert's also going to have his series called Learning 3D, which airs every month, I believe, every other month. And then in those months where Learning 3D doesn't air, Smack 101 will come out with a new episode. So we may take maybe a year or so to get all the way up to where we need to be to pick up to where his Learning 3D skills are, but that'll give you plenty of time to practice and maybe you can stay, you know, maybe you can hang with the pace that I'm setting with the Smack 101 episode. So thanks again for watching. Move around a little bit. Be like, oh. Ah. No, and then I'll just, you know. Your chargers are expensive too, like 200 bucks, man. Man, have fun with those light bulbs. Don't catch yourself on fire. Do something cool.